Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the EIGRP stub routing feature. We're going to be using this network diagram here to first explain a little bit about what the EIGRP stub feature is, and then we'll jump into the rack on real equipment, and I'll show you how to configure it. So first of all, before we understand what stub routing does, we need to understand a little bit about how EIGRP works internally. So walk through this with me here. Let's imagine that router 2 and router 4 are at a main headquarters site, okay? And they're obviously connected through a high-speed LAN interface. And behind router 2 and router 4 up here, imagine you've got your entire enterprise network. You know, a really big LAN could have hundreds or even thousands of different routes, okay? Down here, we've got a branch site connected over a WAN, actually redundantly connected over two WAN links. So router 5 is going to represent the branch, and we are dual homed to both router 2 and router 4, and of course we're running EIGRP. Now, what's going to happen normally, if say router 2 or router 4, say they lose a route that's back here in the enterprise network, and there's no feasible successor. What's going to happen is, in EIGRP, if you lose a route and there's no feasible successor, you're going to go ahead and query all of your neighbors. So in this case, that would include router 5. So if we lose a route, we're going to have to go ahead and do what we call go active on the route, which means we're going to query all our neighbors. So we're going to send out a query over the WAN links down to router 5. Now sometimes we don't want that to happen. It might not be very efficient especially in this case where router 5 is sort of the end of the line and that's really what a stub router means it means hey I'm, I'm at the end of the line there's no routers behind me um, so don't there's really no point in those routers asking router 5 if he has the missing route because router 5 is basically he's the end of the line if he didn't advertise it up he doesn't have it so really that's kinda how EIGRP works right out of the box and uh, we might not want that to happen it's not a very efficient thing when we're working with a stub router so what uh, stub routing does a couple different things the way you enable it you only enable it on the stub router itself so down on router 5 we configure it with the EIGRP stub command router 5 will then signal up to both router 2 and router 4 and he will inform them that I am now a stub router. Now what does that mean? Well it tells router 2 and router 4 first of all don't bother sending me queries when you go active on a route because I don't have it. The only thing I have is what I've told you. Okay. So first of all it cuts back on all those unnecessary queries and it helps scale things better. It also cuts down on bandwidth utilization over our WAN links because we're not sending out those requests anymore. The other thing that happens with EIGRP stub, router 5, or the stub router, by default, he is only going to advertise up to his neighbors his directly connected and summary routes in EIGRP. And the reason that is, because think about this problem. What if, on our enterprise network, what if there's a problem on VLAN 24 and router 2 and router 4 lose link? Well, what could happen is, for router 2 to route to some network over in the enterprise it could take the long path all the way over the WAN all the way back up that WAN link or vice versa and you really might not want that if say you know you've got gigabit LAN connections or something in your enterprise network and maybe this frame link is a T1 and this frame link is a backup uh, 128k or something all of a sudden you're pushing a ton of traffic through those WAN links, you end up saturating it, possibly even bringing the link down. Not a good idea. So if router 5 as a stub only advertises up his directly connected and summary routes, then what's going to happen is when say router 4 sends a route down to router 5, router 5 is not going to relay that up to router 2. When router 2 sends a route to router 5, he's not going to relay it up to router 4. So there's no chance then that router 5 can become what we call a transit router. So that's really the basics of what stub routing does. Uh, very simple to configure. Let's jump over to our pod. 
we're going to jump on router 5. Let's just do some quick verification. Show IP, EIGRP, neighbor. And we can see that we're peered up with both routers. Let's do a show IP route. We are getting routes. So configuring stub, very simple. We simply go into EIGRP. And I'm going to say EIGRP stub. Now if I just hit enter right here, it'll work fine, but we'll only advertise by default our directly connected uh, and summary routes, okay? Now if I hit the question mark, well, let, let's do that first. Let's just say EIGRP stub. Now when I do that, it will bounce my adjacencies, so be aware of that if you're doing it in the real world. Everything's back up. Show our neighbors. And let's just take a look at our EIGRP configuration. Pretty simple setup here. So we're advertising in our loopback. We're advertising in both of our point-to-point -point links. Notice how it added the keywords here, connected summary, because those are the defaults. Now if we jump back over to router 2, let's just make sure we are getting the 5.5.5 route. Now the way you verify that a neighbor is a stub, show IP, EIGRP, neighbor detail. And you can see right here, this is our peering down to router 5, and you can see that our peer here is a stub peer, and it's advertising to us connected and summary routes. We should see the same thing on router 4. detail. So there's our peering down to R5 and we do see it is a stub peer advertising connected and summary routes. Now there are things you can do down on uh, the stub router. Let's say that on router 5 I had a static route or I had routes from another routing protocol that I was redistributing into EIGRP and I wanted to advertise those. Well you can tweak the command You'll notice here I can go ahead and advertise connected and summary those are my defaults but I can also add static routes and redistributed routes there's also another option receive only which does exactly what it says it sets the router to say I'm a stub I'm not going to advertise anything I'm just going to receive routes and the leak map that gets into a, a bit more of an advanced config we're not going to cover that today uh, but those are your basic options with EIGRP stub. Now let's give that a try for a second. I'm going to go ahead and add a static route, just a fictional one. So I'm going to say IP route 1.1.1.1 or 1.0 slash 24 and we'll point it to um, 25.25.25.1 25 up to router 2. So now I have a static route, show IP route static, we can see that there. Now because, go back to the EIGRP, because at the moment we have the defaults, we're not going to see that uh, static route, even if we redistribute it in. So let's actually finish that. We're going to say redistribute static, and give it a metric. Now normally we would see that route come in, but because we're a stub router and we haven't added the static keyword, we shouldn't see it. Let's check it out. So we do not see the route here on router 2. Just double check on router 4. Nothing there as well. Let's go back to router 5, modify this. So EIGRP stub, we're going to say connected and we're going to say static. It's going to bounce our adjacencies. Now because we added the static keyword we should see the routes show up. And there we have it. There's our static route that we redistributed in up on router 2. And over on router 4 we do see the same thing. So a couple different tweaks there but uh, the main thing you need to remember for EIGRP stub is it helps with the efficiency of the routers 
because you are not sending those those active queries down when you lose a route so it, it helps with uh, router resources processing memory things of that nature and also it's going to prevent transit routing so that in this case router 2 is not going to take the path through the WAN to get back to the enterprise network and vice versa for router 4 so it also takes care of that and that's really about it for EIGRP stub hopefully this video was informative for you guys Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep studying hard.